right, I'm back. We're still on 207. We're going to graph another rose curve by hand. Uh, let's see. So uh, R equals 5 cosine 3 theta. N is equal to 3. So I'm expecting there to be three petals. To get three petals, I'm going to need six increments. All right, so the period, 2 pi over 3. The period, so the increment, is going to be uh, 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So I need six of them. So I know I'm going to need to go to pi. Um, so that's actually useful information. So 2 pi over 3, here, here, here. It's actually, you do need to know where um, r equals 0. Like, that's maybe the most important thing to know for these. Uh, but we're going to keep going here. So this will be 3 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, so pi over 3. We're counting by pi over 6s, remember? So like each increment is actually pi over 6. I only labeled every other one. So we're going to go to 5. So now, why is it that cosine will always have a petal on the x-axis? Think about how a cosine graph works. You're always starting either at a maximum or a minimum. You're never starting at the origin. So the first thing you do for any cosine graph is always make half of a petal, which is really dissatisfying. Um, but it's the way it works. So here to here, to here. Why am I not making dots? So much easier. Here to here to here. I like edit in some graphing music. I don't know how to do that. I'm definitely not doing that. Um, okay, I need to know where the zeros are, right? So uh, r equals zero. I could solve it, but I have the graph and I already know. So r equals zero gives me theta equals pi over six. And then, uh, so this is two pi over six, three pi over six, which is pi over two, four pi over six, um, five pi over six. And uh, so those, I want to dot in. So let's do that. So we'll use uh, this bright pink color. So pi over 6, dot that in. And you want to go, oh gosh, pi over 6. Uh, you want to go all the way through. And then pi over 2. So remember, we're going to go in along a tangent line, come back out along a tangent line. Happy little curves. Bob Ross of polar graphing. And then here. Okay, so these are all of our tangent lines. And now we need to actually graph. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I don't know if I'm gonna do this faster or not, but this is our theta axis. This is our r axis. When theta equals zero, r is equal to five. I'm gonna count by ones this time, uh, which puts me here, I think. So this is going to be 5. All right. So by the time I get to pi over 6, this is pi over 6. By the time I get to pi over 6, I'm rotating this way. I need to go from 5 to 0. So I'm going to do that. You know, I got that wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4. No, I got that right. Ah, whatever. Uh, OK, so we go from here to here. So that's our half pedal. And now if you go in along the tangent line, you come out. So I'm expecting that I will end up at pi over 3. I need to be at negative 5. So pi over 3, instead of, uh, I don't know, I'm getting all kinds of pop-ups on my computer. I hope they're not, hope they're not translating to the video. Uh, pi over 3, negative 5 is the same point, the same polar representation as um, positive 5, 4 pi over 3. So I'm going to aim for that. Uh, so 2 in here. So if you go in along a tangent line, you come out along a tangent line. So we go like this. OK. By the time I get to, what is it? This is pi. I should have labeled more of these. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. OK. By the time I get to, uh, pi over 2, I need to be at 0 again, so let's do that. In along a tangent line, come out along the tangent line. So uh, when I get to 2 pi over 3, I need to be up at 5 again. So 2 pi over 3, I'll be at 5 again, which is here. So if you go in along a tangent line, you come out along the tangent line. 
And then we're going to go back in. And then like that. So in what order did we graph these things? So it was one, two, three, four, five, six. And what does that correspond to on this graph? It corresponds to one, two, three, four, five, six. Cosine graphs are a little weird. You always do half of a pedal, do the full graph basically, and then close that pedal like every time it's going to happen, uh, which is kind of weird. There's a, so something called a limason is the I in my opinion the a negative cosine limason weirdest polar graph you can make. You'll see when we get there. Um, but it has to do with the fact that you always do like half of a thing and then at the end you close that thing. Uh, so let's see. This one's going to be terrible because uh, at least n is odd, right? So we got that going for us. But uh, n is equal to five, so five petals. So you might be guessing right now, like what's bad about that? Two pi over five is not a famous angle. Uh, so we're not, it's not that much trouble, but we're in a little bit of trouble. So two pi over five is the period. So the increment is gonna be pi over 10. I'm gonna have to think in degrees for this because I, I don't know how else I'm gonna do this. So uh, pi over 10 is 180 degrees divided by 10 is 18 degrees. So that's gonna be nice. Uh, five petals, I need 10 increments. So I only need to go to pi, but I need to cram a lot in there. So uh, what should we do? Let me space this out. So two pi over five, I'll say is here. And then four pi over five, I'll say is here. And then I'm gonna need to go two more increments. So here, here, here. I'm gonna get in trouble by not labeling enough again. I can feel it. So this will take me to five pi over five. Maybe I should do uh, the pi over five. So pi over five, two pi over five, three pi over five, four pi over five, five. All right, good to go-ish. Positive cosine, seven, negative seven. There's so many, so many dots. There we go. So your ability to succeed on these, 100% based on your ability to create this rectangular graph. If you can create this, you can turn it into the polar graph. And then once you get that concept, you can actually turn any trig graph that you can create into a polar graph, because it's the same idea every time. Think about what theta is, think about what r is, plot a point, connect things. Uh, at the origin, you always get these tangent lines. So, whew, okay. So r equals zero gives me theta is like everything I didn't label. So I was really counting by pi over tens. So it's gonna be pi over 10, three pi over 10, uh, five pi over 10, two pi, pi over two likes to show up. So that's five pi over 10, seven pi over 10, uh, and then nine pi over 10. Okay, and then uh, we said pi over 10 is 18, Ugh. so I'm gonna do these in degrees. So theta in degrees is 18 degrees, and then three times 18 is 54 degrees. Uh, five is gonna be, well, 90 degrees. And then uh, seven times 18 is 70, and then uh, whatever, 50, 70 and 56, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, 126 maybe? What just happened there? Go away. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Where'd it go? Okay, so this was uh, 90. So what are these, they keep differing by 36, right? So 126 makes sense. And then another 36 would be uh, 162, I think. And that makes sense because we're like 18 away. I feel like that's right. All right, so I need to like eyeball these a little bit. So this is gonna be great. Here, this is never my favorite example to do. 18 degrees is a little more than 15 degrees. And pi over six is 30, so this is 15 degrees. So a little above the line here, which means on this side, I will be a little below. 
So think, imagine yourself standing at the origin with like a, a broomstick in your hand, right? So like if you're a little above it on one side, you'll be below it on the other. That's like the logic that I use when I try to figure these things out. Uh, 54 is gonna be a little less than 60. So maybe uh, here. So we're below on this side. So we'll be above on this side. Uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. Uh, and then pi over two, thankfully, showed up. This is gonna be so much, but that's all right. It's not any different, it's just a lot more. Uh, 126 is like a little more than one, it's actually like kind of a bunch more than 120. Uh, so maybe here-ish. And then if we're there, so we have to be up on the opposite side here. So I'm gonna start here like this. Ugh. And then uh, 162, I don't even know. I mean, this, this would be 165. So less than that. So like here, maybe. Ugh, this is this is tough. So we're there, we're above there, so we're gonna be below. Okay, so I kind of gave up at the end there, but that's all right, maybe. Let's say it is. Here we go. So you want you got the idea, hopefully, right? Once you get it going, you go in along a tangent line, you come out along a tangent line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna constantly put a target at like seven. So because I'm only gonna label seven, I'm actually only going to like plot that. So I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna go in, in along a tangent line, you go out along the same tangent line. And then what happens is uh, you're always like directly in the midpoint of the two kind of tangent lines that are there. So I'm gonna aim for like basically here and say that that's probably right. Uh, so in along a tangent line, out along a tangent line. Key thing, you'll probably never really be asked to do this again. So here, in along a tangent line, uh, what's in between these? Like here-ish, I guess. Out along a tangent line. Go And you can tell there's something not right in here, the way that I graph those. In along a tangent line, you can come out and be like here-ish, maybe. Out along a tangent line. It's very satisfying when you're right, though. Here goes in along a tangent line. I'm gonna aim for maybe here-ish. Come out along a tangent line. I kind of apologize for this example. I mean, it's it's not great. I've been meaning to change it for years. Go in along a tangent line. And then we're gonna come out along a tangent line. And we're gonna finish strong. And I mean, not bad. Like, I don't know if the numbers are all right, which I think they are, but the the, the proportioning is off. Like, the, I don't think anybody could do a really good job on that. Well, someone could, someone who's like super meticulous, but that's not me for sure. Uh, there you go. I don't know. I'm not going to label it, uh, but you do, you start with a half a pedal. So you always do your one half pedal here. And then when do you finish that pedal? You finish that pedal here. And that's kind of like one of the keys, right? Cosine's always gonna have a pedal on the x-axis because it always is gonna start at a maximum or a minimum, which means you always start like away from the origin and curl toward it to create half of a pedal. And then that means at the end, you always have to finish that pedal. And then you get your full pedals kind of in between. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video here, come back in the next one, keep going. I will see you then.